On Saturday, April 6th, Elon Musk provided a new update at Starbase on the current state and future development of Starship and discussed SpaceX's long-term plans. Elon began his presentation by reminding everyone that SpaceX is very serious about making humans a multi-planet civilization. Starship is the key to that, but there's a lot of work to do before Starship is operational and even more before it's ready to take people into the solar system. That first step in SpaceX's plan is to work out re-entry with the current version 1 design of Starship, and to that end, the goal of the fourth flight test will be to make it through re-entry and perform a controlled descent to the ocean surface. Elon also talked about plans for development and operations. SpaceX will be building more launch pads, the second is already under construction at Starbase, and another at Historic Launch Complex 39A. A second pad is expected at the Cape by the end of next year. Once all the pads are built, most of the launches from Starbase will probably be for development, while the majority of operational flights will be from Cape Canaveral. Offshore launch platforms were also mentioned and are in the engineering pipeline, but they're sitting on the back burner for now, as they probably won't be needed for a long time. Starship version 1, or Starship as we know it today, is limited to just 40 to 50 tons of payload capacity, well short of the 100 tons or greater that has been advertised for the Starship. Numerous changes are needed to upgrade Starship's performance, and that improved vehicle is Starship version 2. SpaceX's engineers are making thousands of design changes to the vehicles. The biggest of these improvements will be Raptor V3 for increasing thrust and reducing the dry mass fraction in both stages. To meet performance goals, the total propellant load on both vehicles will increase from 4,500 tons on Starship version 1 to 5,150 tons on version 2. Extrapolating from the graphics used during the presentation, it would appear that Starship's flaps are also being changed. The forward flaps are being moved further forward, and the root cord length is being reduced, creating a swept shape. Looking down at the base of Starship, it appears that the aft flaps will be enlarged, giving more surface area for control during re-entry. According to Elon, the version 2 Starship will probably be stretched, possibly by 10 meters or more, in future upgrades. Moving down towards the booster, it appears in the graphic that the hot staging ring may be replaced with a taller truss structure similar to the N1 rocket's interstage section, which was also meant to accommodate hot staging. This along with other changes in the vehicle will increase the total stack by 3.1 meters to 124.4 meters. Further down the graphic, it appears that the new, larger grid fins were shown with a 60 degree offset change to 90 degrees like Falcon 9's. These new grid fins seem to be positioned lower on Super Heavy than version 1 design, looking as if they are positioned underneath rather than on the top of the upper dome of the methane tank. Down at the bottom of the booster, SpaceX wants to eliminate the shielding around the engines, significantly reducing overall weight. While Raptor 2s can't be run safely without protective covers, Raptor 3 can. Raptor 3 will be one of the most important changes for Starship and Super Heavy. The engines have been under a cycle of constant improvement from the beginning. Raptor 1 started with 185 tons of thrust and a very complicated arrangement of plumbing. Raptor 2 greatly simplified the engine's design, making it more compact and much more powerful, pushing thrust to 230 tons. Raptor 3 takes these trends even further to create an even more compact and powerful engine, producing a whopping 280 tons of thrust. In combination with this stated target, Raptor 3 will incorporate most of the secondary plumbing into the walls of the pumps and the thrust chamber jacket, following internal channels inside the walls. This is a much more difficult design to manufacture than Raptor 2, but it's a lot easier to integrate and helps enable much greater performance of Starship and Super Heavy with Raptor 3. Without the relatively delicate external plumbing, SpaceX also hopes to eliminate any need for engine shielding. After eliminating and redesigning so many parts, Raptor 3 should be even lighter than Raptor 2. And to top it all off, Elon is hoping perhaps optimistically to see Raptor taken to 330 tons of force, pushing Super Heavy to over 10,000 tons of thrust at liftoff. The goal of SpaceX's Starship is to build a fully reusable rocket, one that can deliver hundreds of times more payload to orbit than Falcon 1, while being even cheaper. Elon stated that their goal is to get the cost of a launch down to as low as two to three million dollars. Countless technical decisions such as the use of autogenous pressurization and the simplification of components and engines are all done to help make this possible.
It's the same kind of decision making that SpaceX used to develop the Falcon 9, and it's let them achieve unparalleled launch rates. With Falcon, SpaceX is on track to deliver 90% of the world's up mass to orbit this year. With Starship V2 and a 100-ton payload capacity, that number will grow to 99% of the world's up mass. And with Starship version 3, SpaceX wants to take that even further, increasing payload capacity of the system to 200 tons. They'll need to stretch the stages to do it, but it won't be to the same degree as Falcon 9. As Elon said, Falcon 9 is a very tall rocket, and that length to width ratio is prohibitive. Still, the stack will be about 150 meters or almost 500 feet tall. A very tall rocket indeed. But why aren't they building this rocket now? SpaceX probably doesn't want to skip V3 just yet because Starship is still young and they need to walk before they can run. There's a lot left to learn about how the vehicle performs during launch and landing and many unknowns are waiting to be discovered. And the fact of the matter is, they won't need that full capacity until they start sending payloads other than just Starlink satellites into space. Ultimately, Starship V3 will be needed for Mars. Elon Musk founded SpaceX with the ultimate goal of getting humans to Mars. In the 20 years since the company's founding, Starship is the closest they've come to achieving that goal. During the presentation, Elon spoke on why humans needed to expand and become a multi-planet civilization. So why Mars? Humans need to live on another planet to insulate civilization against a fatal calamity that would doom a one-planet civilization. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of options. Venus is a staggeringly hot planet with an acidic atmosphere. It's just not possible to live on Venus's surface. At first glance, the moon looks like a good choice. It's close, and there's a lot of resources of interest there, and SpaceX has every intention of building Moon Base Alpha. Unfortunately though, the moon is still lacking in some key resources that would be needed to support a self-sustaining civilization, and it could be subject to a potential attack from Earth. A more distant celestial body will be more insulated from a civilization-ending disaster, natural or man-made. That leaves us with Mars. It's a real fixer-upper of a planet, but it's the only real choice. Elon went to explain what would be needed to colonize the red planet and estimated that a million people would be needed to live on Mars. Mars, however, is not inherently habitable and it'll take a tremendous amount of work to establish a colony. Millions of tons of cargo will be needed to produce an entire industrial base from scratch. With fleets of starships, this will become possible. One day, when a civilization on Mars can sustain itself without resupply from the Earth, SpaceX will have fulfilled its mission to spread and preserve civilization across multiple worlds. In the not-too-distant future, SpaceX may very well achieve this goal.